Let's uh, move straight on to the day's business news for you now. And Britain is uh, poised to sink into a recession as a real cost of living crisis worsens there. Yuka Roya is uh, joining us now from our business desk. She's in the studio. Yuka. Well, Stuart, that warning coming from the Confederation of British Industry, one of the most influential business groups in the UK. The CBI downgraded its growth outlook to 3.7% this year and just 1% for 2023. With prices rising faster than wages, the group says that households' real disposable incomes will fall 2.2% this year, the sharpest drop on record. This despite the government's support measures to help consumers cope with the ongoing cost of living crisis. The CBI also urged political leaders not to unilaterally change the post-Brexit trade rules to Northern Ireland as the government prepares to announce new legislation today. South Korea's manufacturing sector is starting to feel the impact of a week-long strike by lorry drivers. About 7,500 truckers have joined the action so far. Faced with surging fuel prices, their demand in the government set minimum freight rates. Leo McGuinn reports. Strikes centred around pay rumble on as thousands of South Korean truckers refuse to budge over demands for a guaranteed minimum wage. South Korea is a leading supplier of semiconductors, smartphones, cars, batteries and electronic goods. And the strike has deepened uncertainty over global supply chains, already disrupted by China's strict COVID-19 rules and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. At Hyundai's biggest factory, production has dropped to around 60 percent, components not able to be delivered due to the action. The strike has already reportedly cost the carmaker over $180 million. Hyundai Motors is closely monitoring the situation and we hope to normalize production soon to minimize impacts on our customers. Busan Port, the world's seventh biggest container port, said the strike had cut its container traffic by two-thirds from normal levels. The strikes have been a major test for new president Yoon suk Yeol in power for just over five weeks. Not in control of parliament, he has maintained that it is up to the truckers to negotiate a deal with bosses and the opposition to extend the minimum wage guarantees at the heart of the dispute. Transport ministry officials met with union leaders on Sunday for a fourth round of negotiations, urging them to return to work. But no agreement appears close to being met. Let's check in on the day's numbers now. A global market rout continues as inflation fears continue to grip investors' sentiment following last Friday's consumer price data in the United States. Europe started trading in negative, uh, negative territory, as you can see, with Paris and Frankfurt down 1.5% at the open. I see a red in Asia as well, with Tokyo, Hong Kong and Seoul all uh, dipping around 3%. Meanwhile, the US dollar further strengthened against the Japanese yen, topping 135 yen for the first time since 2002 earlier this Monday. The Japanese government has voiced concern over the rapid decline of the currency, but the central bank is keeping its negative interest rates unchanged, thus making the greenback more attractive to invest in. The World Trade Organization has kicked off a four-day ministerial conference in Geneva, their highest level meeting in four and a half years. It comes at a time of a multitude of crises, including the war in Ukraine, an energy crunch and climate change, all posing a challenge to the multilateral trading system. As a sign of divisions, dozens walked out when the Russian economy minister took, to the, took the floor. The WTO itself has been facing pressure. Founded in 1995, it counts 164 members, but they have only ever agreed one global deal. Its director general said she was cautiously optimistic some deals could come out of the meeting this week, including on fisheries and COVID-19 vaccines. We may have a lot of dossiers, a lot of potential. I don't know if we can land all of them, but if we land one or two, I think that's success. But let me be clear. Even landing that one or, one or two will not be an easy road. The road will be bumpy and rocky. 
There may be a few landmines on the way. We'll have to navigate those landmines and see how we can successfully uh, land one or two deliverables. Following Brexit and the COVID-19 pandemic, London is keeping its position as the top European destination for foreign investment in financial services. But France is fast catching up. A new report by accountancy firm EY showed that Paris attracted 60 new projects in the sector in 2021, just behind London's 63. The number was up seven for Britain and 11 for France. And for the first time, France overtook Britain in attracting investment projects from the United States. This while foreign direct investment into financial services fell 2.8% overall across Europe. And that's it for business.